In this webcast, uh, we're going to take a look at implementing convoys in BizTalk Server 2006 Release 2. Especially, uh, we're going to focus on looking at implementing a sequential convoy. And I have a scenario here, which is based on a, a sushi restaurant, which is using RFID tags to actually um, sort of process uh, and record what's happening with the sushi as it goes around the conveyor belt in the restaurant. It's a level 200 webcast, so uh, if you're familiar with building uh, orchestrations and understand a bit about how the orchestration engine works, you should be fine in understanding most of the, uh, the theory on this. We're not going to be focusing on anything uh, that's, uh, that's too complex. We're going to look at a quick introduction to convoys and then look at uh, the implementation that I've built of a sequential convoy in BizTalk, and then also discuss some other uh, aspects related to developing convoy orchestrations. So convoy orchestrations uh, are a pattern that I've heard of only uh, related to BizTalk Server. And if you read the uh, Enterprise Integration Patterns book, the closest pattern that they describe is the uh, aggregator pattern. We've got two main types uh, of convoys that we can develop. There's the sequential convoys and the parallel convoys. A sequential convoy is going to be receiving a, a stream of messages. Uh, often it's the same type of message uh, coming from the same destination. But you can build sequential convoys that uh, receive different types of messages. The parallel convoy that we're not going to be focusing on in this presentation is going to be focusing on uh, looking at sort of grouping uh, a range of messages together. So different messages coming in uh, are going to trigger the uh, business process. Whatever happens either in the sequential convoy or in the parallel convoy, we are going to be aggregating the messages together and performing some uh, kind of uh, aggregation operation. So this is the uh, scenario that I'm working with. Uh, if I just click on play here, we're going to run into debug mode and we'll start off with a Windows presentation foundation which is going to uh, form the basis for the sushi restaurant uh, scenario. So what we see here in the sushi console window is uh, one of these sushi restaurants where they have the food going around on the conveyor belt. Now this has been uh, done uh, before. Uh, there's a sushi restaurant based in Redmond near the Quick Learn training facilities that actually has RFID chips on all of the plates that the sushi is placed on. So when uh, a sushi is placed on the conveyor belt, it will pass an RFID reader, uh, which is here. And as it goes around the conveyor belt, it will keep passing this RFID reader. And it will generate uh, messages which are known as tag reads. These are being saved in the directory. You can see that there's one tag read message coming through here. And as it passes the RFID reader, we get a second tag read message coming out. I'll just open up one of these uh, and show you uh, what it looks like. We've got the sushi ID, we've got the type of sushi, the price code. We've also got the time when the uh, sushi was prepared. It's, you'll notice it's not set to the correct date. Uh, I'm going to do some formatting the orche orchestration that's going to actually set that uh, to uh, a proper date. As it's going round, uh, we get more messages coming out from the same uh, sushi, uh, which is sushi ID 1. And this, as this keeps going round, you'll see that we keep getting uh, the messages here. Now in more complex scenarios, we're going to get more of these sushis placed on the conveyor belt. And this is going to start generating a large number of tag reads that are going to be fed into the RFID system. So if I go back to uh, Explorer, you can see here that we're generating a stream of these tag read messages that are coming out. Each one of these will have a different uh, sushi ID on it. And what we need to do is to be able to uh, get this stream of messages into some form of business process where we can actually understand what's going on uh, within this, uh, this process. What I'm going to do is just click on these. Uh, every time I click on uh, a bit of sushi, it's going to actually disappear from the uh, conveyor belt. And that's going to mean that somebody within the restaurant has actually taken the sushi off the conveyor belt and has consumed that. So our business process needs to understand that when we do not get uh, a message coming in uh, in the tag reader, that somebody has actually removed that sushi from the conveyor belt and uh, consumed it, and that we need to uh, alert the system to that to say that the sushi has been consumed. We've also got the scenario where a sushi goes onto the conveyor belt and uh, it's going to be going round and round and round, and if nobody consumes that sushi for a set time period, maybe it's going to be for uh, an hour or so or 30 minutes, we're going to declare that that sushi isn't as fresh as it, it should be, and we're going to remove that from the conveyor belt. So the business process also needs to take this into account when it's uh, processing all of these tag reads. So I'm going to go in here and just delete uh, the various uh, tag reads that I've got present in the, uh, in the file there because I'm going to use this uh, as the inbound folder uh, for my uh, application, for my BizTalk server application. And we're going to go back into Visual Studio and just take a look at how we can build an orchestration that's going to handle this uh, business process. So I'm going to view this in um, the full screen mode. 
we don't have a lot of uh, space when I'm uh, recording these, so I'm just going to zoom out to 50% and show you an overview of this uh, orchestration. Now, this is a fairly basic sequential convoy orchestration. I'm going to be receiving all these sushi tag reads that are coming in here uh, through this uh, receive shape, with it, which is uh, an activating receive shape. We're then going to use a map to actually generate uh, the timestamp on when the uh, sushi was uh, produced. And then we're going to go down, and this shape is going to set the uh, expiry time on here. We then go around a loop within the orchestration. And every time we're in this loop, we're going to be listening using the Bitalk listen shape for the actual tag read to be coming in. And this is another message coming from that uh, same, um, same logical receive port into the orchestration, which is going to be a tag read for the same piece of sushi. I'll zoom in a bit more so we can actually run through uh, and see what's happening in a bit more detail. So this is receiving the first sushi. Here's just generating uh, a message which is uh, cloning the message and setting the timestamp. We then set the uh, expiry time and what I'm doing is just taking the actual prep time and I'm setting uh, it to be uh, the actual uh, time plus 10 minutes. So I'm using uh, some code here to just add 10 minutes to the time when the sushi is produced. And I'm writing out to the debug window that the sushi has been added and writing out the actual uh, sushi ID for that. So uh, whilst the uh, sushi is on the belt, in the orchestration view I've got a um, orchestration variable which is a boolean variable saying uh, on the belt and this is uh, initially ish initialized to be true so whilst uh, on the belt is equal to true we're going to be running around this loop and uh, just uh, processing this now normally with BizTalk you take some action if a message comes into BizTalk server and this is kind of the uh, opposite scenario in the um, sushi uh, restaurant if we are getting a tag read uh, every um, 20 seconds or so, that means that the sushi is still on the conveyor belt, so we need to uh, take no action uh, and just run around that loop. On the other hand, if we do not get a message coming in in this receive shape, that means somebody has consumed the message. So our business process, if we get no message, we need to take some action uh, based on that. So I'm using a listen shape here. We will either get a tag read or we will actually hit the timeout on this delay shape, which is the belt time. And I've set this for 20 seconds, which is just a few seconds more than it takes the sushi to go around the conveyor belt in my animation. Now, if uh, we do hit the t this timeout, uh, I'm going to actually set uh, a flag to say that the sushi is not on the belt, and that's going to force us to break out of the loop. I'm also writing out into the debug window that the sushi has been consumed and sending out the ID of the sushi. So I send out an actual message to this send port here, which is consumed out, and we will see the messages coming in uh, in Windows Explorer there. Now, if we do get a tag read, uh, we've got the case where the sushi could have expired. If it's been on the belt for above a certain time, which I've set to uh, about 10 minutes, we can look in the expired section. I'm calling out to a helper class here and just checking if the sushi has expired. And this is just a simple C-sharp class that compares the system time with this expires time and will either return true or false. Now, if this returns false, uh, then the sushi is just going to stay on the belt. I'm just printing out here into the debug window that sushi is on the belt. We're not actually changing anything within the orchestration process. We drop, drop out of here and go around this loop again. Now, if the sushi has uh, expired, uh, we're going to say that on belt is equal to false, and we're going to write that the sushi has been uh, removed from the uh, conveyor belt there, and we're going to see that coming out in the debug window. So I've got this uh, orchestration uh, deployed. I'm going to test this. Uh, before I do, I'm just going to take a quick look at the uh, message that I'm using to represent the sushis. So when we're building a uh, convoy orchestration, we need to use correlation. Now, I've covered correlation in uh, a couple of uh, other uh, of these uh, webcasts. So if you want to check out the uh, basic correlation webcast, this will talk about how we build correlation. Now what I need to ensure is that uh, for every uh, plate of sushi that's placed on the conveyor belt, I get an instance of this orchestration. There is going to process and handle all the messages for that specific uh, sushi instance. Now what I need to do is to group all of the tag read messages that have the same sushi ID. So when sushi1 goes on the conveyor belt, it's going to generate the orchestration instance. And every tag read from sushi1 is going to be routed to the same orchestration. Same with Sushi2, that will have its own orchestration, and all of the further tag reads for Sushi2 will be routed to that uh, orchestration instance. So if we look in the uh, promoted properties here, you can see that uh, the Sushi ID here is set as a promoted property. I've got this PS Sushi ID um, XSD, which is the uh, property schema, and it's just been promoted in the uh, regular way there. So when I've built my orchestration, this is the activating receive, and if we view the uh, properties window on this,
we'll see that this is actually initializing the sushi ID correlation set. I'm initializing the correlation there. In the next receive shape here, when I actually receive the next tag read message, I am going to be following the same uh, correlation set, this sushi ID uh, correlation set. So that's going to ensure that every uh, tag read for each specific uh, plate of sushi is going to be routed to the same orchestration instance. And I'll have one orchestration instance for every plate of sushi. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is actually enable uh, this set receive location, so we will be picking up uh, the messages. Previously I had this uh, disabled. I'm going to go into uh, Windows Explorer here, and I'm going to go to the outbound window, and we're just going to see, well, instead of the inbound messages, we're going to see the outbound messages that are coming from the orchestration. I'm also going to use Debug View here to actually view the plates of sushi as they are coming through. So this is going to be what is coming through from the uh, orchestration. And I'm going to run debug, not on the BizTalk application, but just on the uh, Windows Presentation Fa Foundation application that I'm using as my animation here. So looking at debug view, and uh, not much uh, real estate here as far as pixels are concerned, I'm going to try and show um, this, uh, the actual animation and the output from debug view. So the first sushi is going on the conveyor belt, and you can see the orchestration has picked up that sushi1 has been added. And as this works its way around the conveyor belt, it will come back to the RFID tag reader. And as it passes the tag reader, we'll see that the orchestration is picking up this message, and it's saying that Sushi1 is still on the belt. Looking in uh, the BizTalk admin console, I've got my favorite query here, which is uh, selecting all service instances. You can see that I have one active orchestration, and that is managing the state of the first plate of Sushi that I've placed on the conveyor belt. So I'm going to add some more sushi here. I'll bring up the debug view uh, window. You can see uh, sushi1 has gone round uh, the belt another time. Bring up the sushi console, and I'm going to send in some more bits of sushi. So uh, I shouldn't have done that. That was really clashing there. So I'm going to send in some more pieces of sushi here, separated uh, around the, uh, the conveyor belt here. What we should be able to see is that we're getting additional uh, tag read messages coming through. You can see that Sushi 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 have been added. Sushi 1 was consumed, that's where I just clicked on it to delete it because it was sort of overlapping uh, from Sushi 2. And as these sushis are going around, you can see that the orchestrations are picking up these Sushi on belt messages. And if we go to the uh, query again, if I refresh my query, you can see that I've got eight orchestrations that are running, and I've also got uh, eight bits of sushi on the conveyor belt, which is sushi 2 through to uh, sushi 9. Now, hopefully in my restaurant, we're going to get some customers that are going to be consuming this sushi. And to do that, if I click on one of these sushis with a mouse, it will be removed from the conveyor belt. So a couple of bits of sushi have been removed, and the orchestration is expecting to get a tag read message from those bits of sushi. But after uh, a while, uh, the orchestration will hit that timeout, and you can see that we have got Sushi 2 has been consumed here, and also Sushi 4 has been uh, consumed. But we're still getting tag reads coming through for the remaining pieces of Sushi. Going back to uh, debug view, sorry, to the, uh, the query here, uh, running this query, we've now got six uh, query results, six orchestrations that are still active. Going back to Sushi Console, we've got six bits of Sushi that are running around on the conveyor belt. And we've also got the debug messages coming through for the further six uh, bits of sushi. So going back to the console, I'm going to start removing these. So I'll take away everything except just one bit of sushi that I'll leave uh, running around on the conveyor belt. So what we should see uh, in the debug window after a period of time is that all of these bits of sushi will, um, uh, will be consumed here and will eventually uh, just left, be left with one sushi on the belt, and I think that's sushi 8, which is still going to be uh, remaining on the belt there. And looking back in the uh, query here, if I refresh my query, you can see we're just down to one active orchestration instance that is actually processing uh, the uh, requests for, uh, for Sushi 8. So we've got all these messages with uh, Sushi 8 st still being on the belt. So my orchestration does seem to be working correctly. You can see if I go out here, I've got eight messages here for these Sushis that have been consumed, that have been routing out. So we should see all of these appearing here, with the exception of uh, Sushi 8. The last thing I need to test is if the sushi is going to be expired, uh, and we're going to get that sushi expired message. And this is going to be after a 10 minute delay. And my orchestration has probably been running for about uh, sort of about four or five minutes now. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording uh, and just uh, start up again when uh, the expiry time for Sushi 8 uh, has come along. I'll just leave it running around on the conveyor belt until the orchestration does decide after 10 minutes that it has become uh, stale and we're going to uh, remove that. So I'm just going to click on pause and uh, pause the recording. Okay, so we can see from debug view that when these other sushis were consumed, we've got all these sushi on belt messages uh, for sushi 8. If I scroll down in debug view, you can en eventually see that the sushi has been removed. We're getting this sushi removed message. We've also got this expired message that was for sushi ID 8 that uh, did actually go over its uh, expiry time of uh, 10 minutes. So, uh, just to get a view of what was happening in that uh, orchestration here, if I look at my uh, ODX file, I'm just going to stop uh, debugging here. We can see the, uh, the actual flow of the orchestration. What's going to uh, give us uh, this a bit more clearly is to look at this in health and activity tracking and just whiz through the orchestration in the orchestration debugger. So I'm looking at the query which is most recent 100 service instances and running that. And we've got all these pipelines and stuff that we're executing here. Uh, so top tip, if you want to find out just the orchestrations that are running, you can actually go down and modify these queries. They're basically SQL queries running against a couple of views in the tracking database. So what I'm going to do is say where the um, service type is equal to orchestration. And just click on uh, Run Query there. And this is just showing me all of the orchestrations that have been uh, executed here. Now, I like having this query, and so you can also do a file save query as instead of most recent 100 service instances, let's call it most recent 100 orchestrations. Uh, and you'll need to change the file here. So you don't overwrite the uh, previous query. Click on Save there. And now when you go into HAT, you will see most recent 100 orchestrations appearing there in the query window. So I quite often have a few of these that I customize for myself. OK, so looking at these orchestrations, you can see that some of them were completing quite quickly. This is in milliseconds, so there's about 100 seconds of these. So let's uh, crack open one of these in the orchestration debugger and take a, a quick look at it. So this was one of these where the sushi was uh, basically being... Um, consumed by one of the customers here. And if we scroll down uh, through the actual shape, so I'm pressing on the key down key, we can see that uh, we're starting the orchestration, we're receiving uh, that message, uh, we're constructing the shape, and then we're going into this loop and into this uh, listen shape. Now listen shape, uh, one of two things can happen. We can either um, get this tag read message come through, and then we're checking the expiry time, the sushi is on the belt, and we go around the loop again get another tag read and uh, we're still on the belt and we're going to keep doing this as long as the sushi is on the conveyor belt we're going to get be, be getting these tag read messages coming in uh, every um, 30 seconds or so every, sorry every 15 seconds or so and that's going to um, keep the orchestration active but eventually uh, that is going to be removed from the uh, plate and we're not going to get the uh, tag read message come in. So this time in the listen shape when this issue has been removed, this timeout will come into effect here, the actual belt time after 20 seconds. We know that the sushi is now not on the belt so we set the flag to false. We also send out the consumed message and uh, we'll go on and actually terminate the, uh, the orchestration. So that's what happens when somebody consumes the sushi. If I look here in the times, we'll see that one did complete for 10 minutes. Uh, this is the um, one where the sushi expired here. So if we bring this one up in the orchestration debugger, it will start off uh, exactly the same as the last one. In this time, uh, we're, we're basically receiving the sushi, activating the orchestration instance, and then uh, we're going around in the listen loop, getting all of these tag reads coming in. And each time we get a tag read, we're checking the expiry time. And each time this is uh, coming back as false. You can see the um, we've got a, a large number uh, of uh, loops around this shape here. So I'm going to go down somewhere near the bottom here and just bring into somewhere where we're uh, sort of, uh, quite a lot uh, lower down the loop. So here we're reading the uh, tag read. Uh, we are still on the belt here going around another time, uh, has the sushi expired? And this time uh, we've gone over that 10 minute interval where the sushi has expired. So we're dropping down this section in the decision branch. We're setting the uh, sushi on belt to false here. And we're also sending an expired message out down to the filing system. And the orchestration then does uh, terminate. And you can see that expired message appearing here for sushi ID 8. Okay, a uh, quick summary uh, of convoy orchestrations. 
Um, so basically, um, for further reading on this, I think the best resource you can find uh, is a white paper called um, this talk server 2004 convoy deep dive uh, written by Stephen Thomas uh, who's one of the BizTalk MVPs so don't be put off by the title of having BizTalk server 2004 in there it's a great white paper that was written uh, in uh, in 2005 and it runs through uh, a lot of the theory uh, with building uh, convoy orchestration so even though it's in the 2004 technical articles section on MSDN it's still uh, one of the best resources I've found if you just want a white paper that runs through all of the uh, the theory on uh, on building convoys. So you can see this does look sort of fairly similar uh, to the convoy that I've been uh, building with a, a listen shape here to actually run around the loop and uh, process these uh, these tag messages. Other resources, uh, Bistock Server 2006 uh, Recipes, uh, sorry for the spelling mistake there, uh, does have an actual uh, section on building uh, the um, uh, convoy orchestrations. Also Professional BizTalk Server 2006 by Darren Jefford and uh, others uh, gives you a, a really good section uh, in the orchestration section on building uh, orchestrations and uh, various issues that you can run, to, run into. Beware of zombies. Uh, if you've checked through my uh, topic, uh, the webcast I did on advanced correlation and zombies, uh, you will understand that whenever we use a correlation we can get zombies occurring. And zombies uh, are probably um, most notable when you are building uh, sequential convoys, uh, you get a real big issue uh, with uh, with zombie uh, zombies that can occur. If we take a quick look back at the uh, orchestration that I've built here, uh, you can see why this is uh, is going to happen. We've got an orchestration that is uh, listening for this uh, inbound message, and we've also got this this timeout message where we've got the tag read and uh, we've got the uh, belt time. Now what you can uh, can happen is that uh, if you get the belt time uh, expiring just before you get one of the tag read messages, what will happen is the orchestration will stop listening uh, for this tag read message. It will then uh, go through and start to send this message. Now if you imagine that when we're going down this branch, we suddenly get the uh, message published into the message box database, we will still have this subscription present, this tag read subscription. And it will result in uh, you know, a tag read message being sent to the orchestration, but the orchestration does not consume that, it just goes off and fires the message. So a uh, good chance that the orchestration in some scenarios can be suspended with this uh, delivered not consumed message.